um, you know, we talked before, obviously, you've been thinking about retirement. For this camp, was that a motivation? Did you try to block it out? Was it a distraction? Um, I was, because the thing is, is, is throughout my whole life, you know, like from when I wrestled in high school, the motivator to end on a good note high school was because I had college, you know, and then after co wrestling in college, the motivator to end at a good note in college because I wanted to wrestle in the Olympics, you know, so I always had like this next step and then, you know, my, my college career got cut a little short and, um, you know, I found fighting and, and it filled that, that void for me and to answer your question, it was maybe. Because if, if, if I came in here with this is indefinitely my last fight, what am I looking forward to? So I was looking to come in and, and, and put on my best performance and almost feel invincible or end him in the first, first round where I'm like, give me somebody else, you know? Um, but, I mean, it was... Uh, a tiring fight for me a little bit, even though it may not have looked like it. Um, and, you know, I, I would have liked to, there would have been more blood and, and, you know, maybe me break his arm or something like that. But it wasn't the case. He kept blocking his face, you know. Um, so in my eyes, it wasn't exciting. So, but I got the win. And uh, nobody's going to remember that wasn't exciting. They remember I won. Well, I mean, you know, I was telling myself if I lost, I was indefinitely retiring because I would rather retire than the UFC not sign me back or, you know, or cut me, you know, like, ah, I'm not fired, I quit. Um, but I was able to go out on a win. Why did you pull the trigger? What, what, what convinced you to say, no, yeah, this is the right time? Um, the answer to that is, is in the first round, he... He hooked up and he hit me pretty hard and kind of stumbled me down. And I got up and he was right in my face and I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing this right now. Like you, you really want to fight me right now. Like you're, you're not giving up. You think you're gonna beat me right now. And for, you know, maybe 20 seconds, I was like, oh, do I? Maybe I, maybe I just let this guy win, you know? And then I got to his leg. I'm like, nah, you ain't gonna win, dog. Um, but the fact that I had this little conversation with myself for 20 seconds in a fist fight when I was younger, I would never, ever, ever think that, ever, you know, and I've, you know, the saying that the less you know, the better, I feel like that's the case for fighting, you know, I know too much about fighting and, and I've done it so many times that I know what I have to do to win, and I know what he's thinking, and I'm tired, man. Now you've made the decision, is there a sense of like a weight off your shoulders? Now you've actually pulled the trigger you've done, or is it crazy? I mean, if for some reason I run out of money really quick, <laughs> and, I, and I need a quick turnaround, you know? Um, but the thing is, 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 and I was telling another interview earlier, is that I've, I never balled out of control, you know. When the bill comes, I'm not like, I'm not trying to grab it really fast. And I'm, you know, I just I don't buy designer clothes, you know. I was I was able to buy a house. It's not a big house, but it's enough for me and my my boys. Um, I have a reliable car. Um, I don't have fancy watches, you know. Um, I got a couple of dollars in investments, and um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to kind of get into the workforce I guess you know or I mean if the UFC has if they want me you know to do a little talking or a little I'm in I'm game you know but uh in terms of fighting and, and getting punched in the face not into it anymore is there an immediate plan like for what you will do it sounds like you're keeping your options open I mean is there like a job waiting for you or a, a something that you're, you're wanting to do <laughs> um so after the Rick Glenn fight Prior to that fight, I, I told myself, if I lose, I'm retiring. And after the third round, I totally thought I won. And Ryan LaFleur came in the, in the octagon. And he said, you, you, you pushed. You got the job done. You definitely won that fight. And then I got the result. And I looked at him. I went, I have to retire. I told myself I'd retire. This is it. I'm done with this. You know what I mean? Three split decisions in a row where I really watched them. And I went in when I rewatched them with the the 
looking for how that guy beat me, and I didn't see it. I, and I was really open. I mean, maybe, maybe Elkins, maybe. But the other two I smashed. And I didn't want to, you know, give judges the ability to do that to me again. You know, I mean, in wrestling, you win, you know, 7 to 3. In football, you win 7 to 49 or whatever, you know? Like, it's there. And, and after fighting for, you know, a decade, I'm s still slightly unaware on how fights are scored. Like, I don't, you know, I, I mean, I outstruck Feely, but he took me down for two times for a split second. So I was like, all right, I won that. But I didn't. So then against Rick Glenn... He outstruck me by six punches, but I took him down six times and held him on his back for, I don't like, a third of the fight, and then I lost. And I was like, wait, I don't get it, you know? Um, and I just don't want to be able to put in that position for people to just, when you lose, the world stops, man. And, it, and, and, and it's, fighting is a very lonely sport, like, when I go back to, to the, my room right now, I bet you I'm going to have a ton of texts. Great job. When you lose, <laughs> you don't get those texts, man. And it sucks. And um, I don't want to do that anymore. Where would you look back on your career then? I mean, would you enjoy your time as a fighter? Or are you going to think back like, God, I wish I'd never done that? And um, no. When I was when I was younger, I would watch Barry Sanders like crush the field. And I'd watch his his highlights before football games, and I would try to be like Barry Sanders. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna be a professional NFL player. And I learned like by eighth grade, like, hey, not in the cards. <laughs> but I was I was very determined to be a professional athlete of some shape or form, you know. And I fell in love with wrestling, and and the goal was to be an uh, Olympic wrestler. And in my mind, an Olympic wrestler is a professional athlete, even though they kind of aren't. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, my, my college career got cut short and, and fighting filled that void. And, and I was like, hey, I can still be a professional athlete, you know. Um, when I first got into fighting, the goal was just to make enough money just to pay off my college loans. And then I found out you could make a career out of it, or I, I found out you could make, you know, money. I was like, what? So I was fighting for 400 and 400, and I thought I was rich, and I was going out and, like, taking, taking a girl out. <laughs> like, goes on me, babe. Like, I, how many drinks you want, you know? Um, but then I found out you could really make a career out of it. And, and, you know, I would drink a few beers, and I'd watch, like, Donald Cerrone and, and Ben Henderson, you know, in a fight, and I'd be like, I think I could take them down, you know, like... I could definitely take them down. And I always had that mindset, you know. Um, and, and I started learning more and more about fighting, and, and it hurts. <laughs> How long has retirement been in mind? Was it just starting this camp, or is it something that's been growing for um, Because the thing is, at, at, at fighting at 145, you know, I know I'm short and stuff like that, but I'm jacked. I don't know if you could tell. Um, and I, I naturally get up to like 175, you know, like have a few cervezas, you know, and a couple chicken parmesans. Um, that's like where my body wants to hang out, you know. And so like when I would get a fight, it wasn't like, oh, I got to get in there and get tired and fight this guy. It's I have to lose 30 pounds. You know, and um, and I've been doing it for a long time. You know, set what eight years. I don't feel like it's good for your body. <laughs> um, so I mean, that's why you know, like after the Rick Glenn fight, and it was like, I kind of had—I don't know if I could curse or not—but I kind of like fuck it. I don't care anymore. I'm not gonna cut that extra ten pounds. I'm gonna fight it wherever I want. And 155 is is where I started fighting at. And I was 7-0 at 155 at one point in my life. And I, was in, I felt invincible, you know. What do you think your favorite memory would be about your career? My favorite memory, because, um, again, I would watch Donald Cerrone and I'd watch Clay Guida fight. And I'm like, man, these guys are animals. They must be. They're, like, they're sponsored by Tap Out. They must be making bank. 
You know, I got buses and stuff like that. So when I fought Clay Guida, that was pretty cool. Uh, beating a guy that I, I kind of looked up to, and I thought he was like a, a, a complete stud. Um, but in terms of performance and leaving it all out there in in the octagon was my fight against Matt Grice, where like I would like on the final bell was gasping for air, so tired, you know, that I left it all right there. They're not. I mean, I thought about it because I watched, you know, some of those big stars, you know, like bring their kids in. I was like, man, that'd be pretty cool. But like, there was a little piece of me that, like, if I lost, you know, like that would suck. I mean, maybe that's a, a shitty way to think, but I don't know. I mean, they're they're still pretty young, you know. They're gonna be four and six in in April, and. Um, you know, there's people here drinking and, and, you know, blood and stuff like that. I don't – well, we could watch it from my couch. You have to go back to 2011 when you were the underdog in a fight. You were put as the favorite originally and then fetched the underdog. Is that a thing that's insulting to you or does that even go into your mind? I love it. Love it. Love it. Because I, I, was, I was never – at least in my mind, I was never the most naturally gifted athlete in any sport I did. Um, what made me, what put me in the starting position or what made, is my extra work and my ability to grind and just keep going, you know. Um, and I was going against guys that were naturally, I felt, freaks, we call them in wrestling, you know, just like, he just came out of the womb knowing how to crush a side headlock where I had to like drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it, you know. Um, so for me, man, I was, I was always kind of the underdog and I always wanted to prove people wrong. That's, that's one thing for me that's very motivating is when you tell me I can't do something, you know. Yeah, you'd like your career to be remembered for someone who was less athletically gifted than the competition but maybe your heart drove Yeah, I'm, I'm a very heart-driven guy. Um, and my, my desire and will to win is, is very great. Um, like, I'm, I'm not done, like, setting goals for myself, you know. This doesn't stop here. Like, I was telling Mark that I'm, I, you know, because I think it's completely insane. I want to run from Long Island MMA in Farmingdale out to Montauk. <laughs> Just because, hang on, for that re you're laughing at me right now. I think it's like, you know, a lot of people don't think I can do it. It's 88 miles. The furthest I've ever run was 11 miles. But, like, I know that mentally I will not break and I will do it. I could do it right now if I wanted to. Are you playing for the summer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. But not in the summer because it's too hot. You know? I'm going to, you know, I, once my foot swelling goes down, maybe I, that's, that's the goal. Good luck. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, man.